Entities can also have recursive one-to-one -one relationships. An example of a recursive one-to-one -one relationship is a succession relationship or who succeeds which individual. In this case, the example is the English monarchy. And so we have a monarch entity with the composite primary key, monarch name, and monarch number. There are two other attributes in the monarch entity, monarch type, and reign beginning date. And one monarch is related to the other monarch by indicating who preceded the current monarch. In my SQL workbench, this is what it might look like. You have the two attribute composite primary key, and those two attributes enter the same entity as foreign keys. This is the succession relationship. In terms of data, this is what an entity that holds this data might look like. In this case, let us consider the first row. The name of the monarch is Victoria I. Victoria I has a predecessor monarch or a, a, someone that preceded her. And that monarch was William IV. To enforce the recursive one is to one relationship, since there can only be one matching primary key corresponding to each value of a foreign key, one needs to add a unique index constraint to the foreign key column. While this might does not prevent null values in the column, it does prevent more than one value in the column. Here is the syntax to create the table for a recursive one is to one relationship. While querying a table that has a recursive one is to one relationship, one needs to use an aliasing approach to create the relationship of the table to itself. Let us first take a look at the data of the table itself. If we select start from the monarch table, we see the contents of the monarch table. And we have a couple of attributes, mon type, monarch type, monarch name, monarch number, reign beginning, and the preceding monarch's name. And so for every monarch that has a monarch name and a monarch number, one can obtain the predecessor monarch predecessor monarch is uh, for each monarch is highlighted right here so one can for instance ask the question who was the preceding monarch to George the sixth <clears throat> to answer that query one needs to write something like this select preceding monarch name and the preceding monarch number from the monarch table where the monarch name is equal to George and mon number is equal to the sixth. And this gives us the preceding monarch to George the sixth as Edward the eighth. Let's ask now a slightly different question. When did the reign of the monarch preceding George VI begin? Now that's a slightly different question. The problem is as follows. While I can know the preceding monarch to George VI, by looking at this row, I can find out the reign of George VI began in 1936, and the monarch that preceded George VI was Edward VIII, I would need to go to a different row. I would need to go to this row right here, Edward VIII's row, to find out when the reign of Edward VIII began. And so I need to, in some way, find a way to relate one row, the George the Sixth row, to this row right here. George the Sixth has premon name and premon num as foreign keys over here indicating the preceding monarch where the primary keys were Edward the Eighth. And so, while again working with recursive queries, 
one needs to start by writing the from class before one fills out the select class. So I'm just going to have a select placeholder and the from class. And in this case, I'm going to say from the monarch table as the current monarch joined to the monarch table as the predecessor monarch. And so I have, I'm going to have an alias of the monarch table where I have a current monarch and I have the predecessor monarch. Now, the predecessor monarch's name and number is present as foreign keys in the current monarch's table as premon name and premon number. And so I'm going to join the current monarch to the predecessor monarch on the following re relationship. The predecessor monarch's mon name. So the predecessor monarch, which is Edward VIII's mon name, is equal to the current monarch's premon name. And the predecessor monarch's mon number is equal to the current monarch's premon number. Where the current monarch's mon name and so the reign of the monarch preceding, and so the current monarch is George the sixth, is equal to George, and the current monarch's number is equal to six. And I am looking for the predecessors. When did the rain begin of the predecessor? In fact, while I want when the rain began, I'm also going to throw the predecessor's mon name and the predecessor's mon num as well, just for good measure. And so I have the predecessor monarch, Edward VIII, and their reign began in 1936. In fact, the 20th of January, 1936. This is how one can join a table to itself on a recursive one-to-one -one relationship. A recursive many-to-many -many relationship is when an entity is related to itself with a many-to-many -many relationship. Think of products. Products can be composed of other subproducts, and those subproducts can compose many other products. Think of, for instance, in winter, when you are going Christmas shopping and you buy a perfume set for a loved one, for instance. That perfume set has many products in them, and those products comprise that gift set and that gift set itself is a product. Those uh, perfume products inside that gift set not necessarily comprise just that gift set but can comprise other sets and those other sets are also products and so one can find a product comprised of many subproducts and then those are products comprising many products. And so, when a product or when an entity has a many-to-many -many relationship with itself, that re relationship is decomposed. And so, we have an associative entity, in this case called assembly, indicating which subproducts make up each product. In MySQL Workbench, this is what it looks like. You have the product entity with the primary key called product ID. That product ID shows up twice in a separate table called assembly, indicating which subproducts make up which product. 
and how much of that subproduct make up that product through the use of the quantity attribute. Here is an example of data that represents a many-to-many -many recursive relationship. You have products such as camera, camera case, so on and so forth. And many of these products make up, for instance, an animal photography kit, which, has a, which is a different product. And the makeup of animal photography kit is indicated by the assembly ta table where you have prod ID in this case 1000 for animal photography kit and sub product ID indicating which sub products make up that product. Here's how the tables for those entities can be made. To write a query on a recursive many to many relationship, here's how one can approach it. To write a query on a recursive many to many relationship, let us first start by looking at the data. So I have two tables, product and assembly. And these are what the two tables look like. Product ID. And in the assembly table, I have product ID and sub product ID basically being foreign keys from product. And so what I would like to do is I would like to think of this as instead of two tables, product joined to assembly twice, I would like to conceptualize this as two separate tables. I want to think of product as two tables called main product and sub product. So again, when working with a recursive relationship, keep your select as a placeholder and start by working the from clause. So I'm going to take the product table and create an alias table called main product. And I want to say that this main product table is joined to the assembly table. The main product is joined to the assembly table on product ID. And so the main product is joined to assembly on main product dot prod ID is equal to assembly dot prod ID. Now that's the main product table. Assembly has this other foreign key over here called sub product ID that needs to be joined to another table. And so I'm going to say that that is joined to another version of the product table as the sub product on the sub product dot prod ID and so sub product is still an alias or a copy of the product table so it still has a product ID being equal to the assembly tables prod ID and so this is how we now have three tables we have main product we have assembly and then we have sub product and so main product and sub product are aliases of the product table I'm sorry, there's a slight mistake over here. It should not be assembly.prod ID, it should be assembly.subprod ID. And now I can select the information I want. For instance, I can select that I want from the main product, I want the product description. And from the sub product, I want the product description. And so what I will now get is each main product in this case i have two main products animal photography kit and budget photography kit and i have sub products that comprise it in fact if i wanted to i could say i could ask the question how many sub products comprise each main product and so it's basically the same query with a couple of tweaks i want the main products product description and a count of the number of rows and I want to count the number of rows where I group by the main product dot product description or product ID 
And so I see that the annual photography kit is composed of eight pieces and the budget photography kit is composed of four pieces. This is how we can join a table to itself that has a recursive many-to-many